Number 43, a Mozart melody, is a, a piece that wasn't written exactly by Mozart, but Mozart, a composer in the classical period, around the time that the American Revolution was happening, um, was a young boy, and he used this song, this uh, familiar tune, to create a piece of a piano piece that used it in many different ways. And when a composer, a person who writes music, makes a piece, they make a composition. So this is a, this is just the basis for some of Mozart's compositions when he was a young kid. Uh, so this tune is called a Mozart melody because he's famously known to take this melody and change it and make it make it its own. Um, so what's really great about this, why Mozart may have chose to use this piece is because it is very simple and very round. It has a nice uh, conclusion. It has a nice moment where it makes the melody want to go on and it is very simple and easy to listen to and pretty. This, this song is also known as the, we use it for the ABB, ABCs, we use it for Baba Black Sheep. Uh, there's many different ways that we use this tune in our culture. So this is an important part of just our Western music culture. We, this song is very important. So when we talk about this musically speaking, um, the important thing to note is the first line and the third line exactly the same. So once you learn the first line, you've learned two thirds of the entire song. Right? The third line is really just a repeat of two measures. So this is a very simple, very um, repetitive piece, but it's very pretty and nice. And we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. So uh, we're going to do, we're just going to go ahead and sing it first, sing it or say the note names first. And then we'll go ahead and come back and just play it. So here is singing Mozart melody with the note names or saying the note names. One, two, ready, go. D, B, A, A, D, B, A, G, G, sharp, sharp, E, E, D, A, A, G, G, sharp, sharp, E, A, A, G, G, sharp, sharp, E, D, D, A, A, B, B, A, G, G, sharp, sharp, E, E, D. All right. So one thing that we can do to kind of add a layer of challenging ourselves is in that second line, let's hold our first, once we play the E in that second measure, let's make sure we hold our fingers down throughout the whole thing. That's what that bracket means, allowing ourselves to tunnel so that our A string can ring freely under hand. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and play Mozart Melody. If that was a little too quick for you and you want to try to sing it again, feel free to pause, go back, and Practice along with the note names until you feel very comfortable being able to identify those notes on the staff. So here we go. We're going to just go ahead and play a Mozart melody. Two, ready, go. Hello, our next tune is 44, Matthew's March. There is something very, very exciting that is about to happen. If you look at the pieces, let's say you take a look at number 43, a Mozart melody, you'll notice that every single F sharp has a sharp in front of the note. Well, we're about to learn about something called a key signature. And a key signature takes all of the sharps that are sprinkled throughout the entire tune and just condenses them at the very, very beginning of each line. And it's just a reminder, it's just an easy way for to tell the musician that all of these notes, 
that are marked with the key signature are sharp. So if you take a peek at the little uh, orange square or the yellow square that says key signature D major, you'll notice that D major has two sharps. And the sharps that that has is F sharp and C sharp. And if you look at number 44, you'll notice that all of the Fs and the Cs that we've known so far to have sharps in front of them now do not have a sharp directly in front of them. And that is because the key signature at the beginning is telling you that all Fs and Cs are sharp by default. So if you don't see anything in front of them, they're automatically an F sharp and automatically a C sharp. So with that in mind, anytime you see a note in the key signature that is a C or an F, we're still going to say the word sharp, even though it's not directly in front of the pitch. So we're going to go ahead and sing through Matthew's March first, and then we're going to uh, play it. So here is singing the note names of Matthew's March, and remember that every C and every F are still sharp. Two, ready, go. D, D sharp, sharp, D, D, A. D, B, sharp, sharp, D, B, A. G, G, A, G, sharp, sharp, G, sharp, B, E, A, E, B, B, B. All right. This next little chunk is specifically for the bases. Bases, what your part is marked, I want you to try a, a different fingering. What's marked in the music is for you to play the first measure uh, like this, the first two measures like this. And to shift back in order to play that note. And that's a great fingering, that's fine, it's going to set you up, especially in the second measure uh, for new notes. But I want you to try something a little uh, different. And if you play fourth finger on the D, and you cross directly over to the D string, you get that same A. This A is also four fingers on the D string, right across from the D string. So you can try this just to see if it feels a little more comfortable for you. D, D, C, sharp, sharp, D, D, A. Give that a try on your own basis. Feel free to pause it and try it a couple times on your own. If that doesn't feel as comfortable for you, you can still go back into the first position. This is what I'm going to demonstrate when we sing through the piece and when we play through the piece just in a second. But I just wanted to offer you maybe something a little different that it's a little easier for you. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and play through Matthew's March, everybody. I want you to still think about those note names up in your head while you play through them. Essentially, everything is just kind of like following that D major scale down the, down the scale. So we're going to go ahead and play and sing. Basses, go ahead and give that fingering a try if you want. If not, feel free to use the one marked in the book. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Number 45, Christopher's Tune, the, uh, the kind of skill that's really important to work on here that's really great is you have these repeating notes that you come back to uh, each time. If you look at the very first note or very first measure, what I'm talking about is coming back to that F sharp. And what's really important to the listener is to play those notes in tune and to try to hit it in the exact same spot every time you play. So what might be a really nice thing to practice just for a little bit is if we took some time and practiced measure one, measure three, and measure five, because these are the sections where we're kind of going back and forth between two notes, and it's just really important to make sure we're playing those notes in tune. So let's just take a second and practice measure one. I want you to, to uh, place the F sharp 
and then relax your, or uh, lift your fingers off that note and just have them hovering over the string. For basses and cellos, we just wanna be up a little bit. Uh, violins, just up a little bit. We don't wanna condense our fingers back and that's also in the high string world too. You wanna just pick up your fingers slightly so that they're still hovering over the note. It's gonna make you more accurate. So let's take a second and practice just that first measure. So along with me, Place your first, place your notes on F sharp. You're ready to play F sharp. Now lift them up only a little bit and don't move. Here's the first measure. One, two, ready, go. Let's try that again. Place F sharp, place it on the tapes, lift your fingers up, and really listen to make sure that you're putting that F sharp down in the same spot each time. One, two, ready, Go. All right, let's look at measure three. We're going between E and G, E and G. For the basses, it's using an open string, but for everyone else, you're gonna be putting your first finger down. What I'd like for everyone to do is put your first finger on E, and now put your fingers down for G. If you're a cello player, four fingers. If you're a violin or viola, third fingers. And I want you to just lift your third finger or that G note up just a little bit so that you hover over the string and we're gonna go back and forth between E and G. So this is measure three. Place the E, place, G, uh, place the note for G and slightly lift off. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Good. Now let's take a second and look at the next uh, line. This is measure five. Place your F sharp. Now what's really great about this, this is a good opportunity for us to practice this tunneling. Cellos, violins, and violas, you can just put your, four, your fingers down for F sharp, either two or three, and as long as you're standing up on the tips of your fingers, you're creating that nice tunnel, you're gonna be able to play that open A string and you're not gonna have to move that F sharp at all, which means that it's gonna be consistent all the way through that measure. Basses, you can do the same thing. You can put four fingers down on F sharp and first finger on A, and as long as your hand is curved and you have that nice C shape, should be able to play both at the same time. So here we go. F sharp, A, ready, go. Again, two, ready, go. All right, good. All right, so the last thing I wanna say is also to the basses, I'm playing the bass for, I play the bass for 44 Matthews March and 45 Christopher's Tune because there's a shift in there and I want us to remember the good aspects of shifting. When we move, our thumb needs to take the trip along with the rest of our hands. We relax our fingers, we keep our fingers on the strings and we slide down the strings. So let's make sure we're using good, um, we're using good shifting technique. All right, let's go ahead and sing the tune first, and then we're gonna go back and just play the tune. So here is Christopher's March. I'm sorry, Christopher's tune, my bad. Here's Christopher's tune. Sing it first. Ready, go. D sharp, D sharp, E sharp, G, rest. E, G, E, G, sharp, G, A, rest. Sharp, A, sharp, A, G, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, sharp, D. All right, let's go ahead and get set. Remember, we're trying to come back to those repeated pitches so that we're consistently playing them in tune. Here we go, Christopher's tune with the, uh, just playing it. One, two, ready, go.
you'll notice that I had a little bit of a flub there in measure two. And honestly, the reason why I did was because I wasn't keeping my eyes in the music. I was trying to do it by ear, trying to do it by memory. And I think I would have played it correctly had I been keeping my eyes in the music. So I'll learn and do better next time. All right. Thank you.